Investment Risk and the Management of Investment Risks Welcome to the Risk Management of Everything channel. On this channel, you will see videos on risk management and the application of risk management to diverse areas and sectors. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the notification button so you can be notified when we upload new videos. Thank you. This video discusses investment risk and the management of investment risks. In this video, you will understand the meaning of investment risk, levels of investment risk, factors influencing investors' risk attitude, types of investment risk, investment risk measurement process and framework, components of risk analysis, investment risk measurement tools and techniques, investment risk management, monitoring in investment risk management, investment portfolio risk control, and how to manage investment portfolio risk. Now, let us start. What is a risk? Risk is a fundamental part of any investment. In financial terms, the risk is the possibility of things not going as expected. Some investment risks can be controlled or mitigated. The amount of risk an investor takes should be a personal decision, influenced by several factors. To some extent, risk can be subjective as only some might find a 50-50 chance of return risk, while most, if not all, will agree that even a 5% chance of return is a risk. For example, an investor can double-check documents and do market research to ensure a property is in a good state before you invest in it. However, there is no way to guarantee a return on your investment since property values are not in your control over time. For example, prices may go up 10% within a year or fall 20% in a few months. What is an investment risk? Investment risk is the probability or likelihood of losses relative to the expected return on any particular investment. Generally, there is always a certain level of risk involved in all kinds of investment. Management of risk is essential to ensure a sound investment strategy. An effective way of controlling risk is by spreading investments across different industries and sectors. This is necessary to ensure that all investment is not committed to the same kind of investment such as stock market, real estate, or any other type of investment. In financial terms, risk can be described as the possibility of things not going as expected. Some risks can be controlled or mitigated. For example, an investor who wants to invest in a property should control and mitigate his risk exposure. For instance, an investor can mitigate his slash her risk by double-checking documents and undertake market research to ensure that the property is in a good state before investing in the property. This implies that all investments entail some degree of risk. Individuals, professional money managers, financial institutions, and many other investment-related professionals must manage investment-related risks in the financial world. Investors can either accept or try to mitigate the risk in investment decision-making. If they choose inaction and engage in inadequate risk management, they are likely to experience severe consequences. If investors take appropriate actions given their investment objectives and risk tolerances, they may reduce the potential for investment losses. Hence, an investment risk management system should be proactive. Investors should have a risk management framework aligned with their investment objectives and time horizon. Investment risk management entails measuring, monitoring, and managing of investment risks of a business. Although these three pillars of risk management, that is, measurement, monitoring, and management, encompass different aspects of risk, they are interdependent and should be well integrated into an investment process. Levels of investment risks it is beneficial for an investor to diversify its portfolio by investing in a mix of high, low, and medium risk investments. There are, therefore, three levels of investment risk, low risk investments, medium risk investments, and high risk investments. Let us discuss these three levels of investment risks. 1. Low risk investments. Some investments are relatively risk-free investments. A low-risk investment is an investment with a low chance of losing some or all the money invested. Savings accounts, cash leases, annuities, government bonds and protected funds are considered low-risk investments. Cash is the most stable investment option, 
but the returns are not usually as high as fixed interest securities. Investment in properties also carries a lower risk, offering rental income and growth in value. A low risk investment has a low amount of upside. This means that there is a low probability of losing some or all your money. A low risk investment might be taken by someone who has more to lose or is less willing to take a risk. Most low risk investments yield less return on investment. Low risk investments offer stability and security, but in theory, the risk is less, and the return is less. It is important to emphasize that all assets have some risks, no matter how low risk it may seem. Anything could happen because nothing is ever 100% safe. 2. Medium Risk Investments Medium risk investments are more long-term investments with moderate returns. A medium risk investor often diversifies its investments by investing in a range of things to maximize the investment returns. These might include shares, corporate bonds, property and stocks that are good for long-term investment. When you purchase a corporate bond, you essentially lend money to a large corporation in exchange for fixed interest rates. Investment in gold and silver also entails a medium level of risk. Gold prices fluctuate, but it is considered safer than trading in the stock market. However, silver is more volatile than gold this making it a high R risk. 3. High Risk Investments A high risk investment is an investment where the degree of risk is high, and there is a high chance that an investor could lose the substantial or all amount invested. In high-risk investments, the chances of underperformance are higher than usual. Those generally take a high-risk investment with good knowledge of investment. Such investments are made by investors who have a high-risk appetite. While government bonds are low-risk investments, high-yield or junk bonds are considered high-risk. Companies that issue these with an increased risk of default has a greater chance of investors not getting their money back. Stocks and shares qualify as high-risk investments because the stock market is highly unpredictable. There is some variation between markets, however. Emerging markets in countries like India or Brazil carry the allure of reward, but they are more volatile than developed markets in the United Kingdom, UK. Cryptocurrencies are further examples of high-risk investments because their values rise and fall dramatically over short periods, making them quite volatile. They are also not covered by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. Factors Influencing Investors' Risk Attitude Some investors focus mainly on returns and how fast they can grow their money. Others protect themselves against the inevitability of a correction or a bear market by using various risk management strategies. That cautiousness does not mean they are paralyzed with fear, stuffing money under the mattress or sticking only to the safest investments they can find. Investors who can preserve their capital during difficult periods will have a larger base to grow from when good times return. The purpose of investment risk management is to ensure losses never exceed an investor's acceptable boundaries. It is about understanding the level of risk a person is comfortable taking risk and building an investment portfolio with appropriate investments. An investor's risk tolerance is usually determined by three main factors. 1. Risk capacity, how much can the investor afford to lose without it affecting actual financial security? Risk capacity can vary based on age, personal financial goals, and an investor's timeline for reaching those goals. 2. Need, how much will these investments have to earn to get the investor where they want to be? An investor who is depending heavily on investments may be faced with a careful balancing act between taking too much risk and not taking enough. 3. Emotions, how will the investor react to bad news, with fear and panic? Or clarity and control? And what effect will those emotions have on investment decisions? Unfortunately, this can be hard to predict until it happens. Types of investment risk the primary purpose of investment risk management is to provide an in-depth examination and management of risks associated with an investment. Risk management is essential because it can reduce or augment risk depending on the goals of investors and portfolio managers. Furthermore, the management of risk has become increasingly difficult due to the multiple aspects of risk. 
Several risks are associated with an investment, including interest rate risk, equity risk, currency risk, liquidity risk, credit risk, inflation risk, concentration risk, horizon risk, reinvestment risk, longevity risk, and foreign investment risk. Let us discuss these investment risks 1. Interest rate risk. Interest rate risk arises due to debt investments such as bonds. Interest rate risk is the potential for investment losses that result from a change in interest rates. It is the risk of losing money due to a change in the interest rate. For example, if the interest rate goes up, the market value of bonds will drop. Another example is if interest rates rise, the value of a bond or other fixed income investment will decline. The change in a bond's price given a change in interest rates is known as its duration. Interest rate risk can be reduced by holding bonds of different durations. Investors may also allay interest rate risk by hedging fixed income investments with interest rate swaps, options, or other interest rate derivatives. 2. Equity risk. Equity risk is the financial risk involved in holding equity in a particular investment. Equity risk often refers to equity in companies through the purchase of stocks. Hence, equity risk applies to an investment in shares. The market price of shares varies all the time depending on demand and supply. Equity risk is the risk of loss due to a drop in the market price of shares. The market value of shares is highly volatile, and a drop in the market value will result in a loss. 3. Currency risk. Currency risk, also referred to as foreign exchange risk. FX risk and exchange rate risk, arises from changes in the price of one currency to another. It is a loss from international financial transactions due to currency fluctuation. It describes the possibility of a loss of an investment's value due to currency fluctuation. Investors may experience jurisdiction risk in the form of foreign exchange risk. Investors or companies with assets or business operations across national borders are exposed to currency risk that may create unpredictable profits and losses. Many institutional investors, such as hedge funds and mutual funds and multinational corporations, use forex, futures, options contracts, or other derivatives to hedge the currency risks. 4. Liquidity risk. Liquidity is the ability of an individual or a company to pay its debts without suffering catastrophic losses. Liquidity is a company's ability to meet its cash and collateral obligations without sustaining unacceptable losses. Liquidity also refers to how easily an asset or security can be bought or sold in the market. It describes how quickly something can be converted to cash. Without proper cash flow management and sound liquidity risk management, a business will face a liquidity crisis and ultimately become insolvent. Organizations can manage their liquidity risk through effective asset liability management. 5. Credit risk. Credit risk applies to debt investments such as bonds. Credit risk is a significant risk facing banks and other businesses. If the entity or company that has issued the bond has financial challenges and cannot pay the interest or repay the principal amount, the investor will suffer a loss. There are two components of credit risk, default risk and recovery risk. Default risk estimates the likelihood of default, while recovery risk measures the recovery in the event of default. 6. Inflation risk. Inflation risk is a risk of reduced purchasing power if an investment does not grow faster than the inflation rate. Inflation erodes the purchasing power of money over time, and the same amount of money will buy fewer goods and services. Inflation is outside the control of individuals and businesses. Rising prices can affect cash investments. Inflation risk is particularly relevant if a person has cash or debt investments like bonds. Shares offer some protection against inflation because most companies can increase the prices they charge to their customers. Share prices should therefore rise in line with inflation. Real estate also offers some protection because landlords can increase rents over time. 7. Concentration risk. Concentration risk is the risk that an investor will suffer from lack of diversification, investing too heavily in one industry, geographic area or one type of security. 
Concentration risk is a loss arising from a large position in a single asset or market exposure. An excessive concentration can give rise to liquidity risk or market risk losses. It is a risk of loss because the fund is concentrated in a particular investment or type of investment. When a firm diversifies its investments, diversification, its risk is spread over different investments, industries, and geographic locations. 8. Horizon Risk Horizon risk is the risk that an investment horizon or capability will be shortened due to an unforeseen event, for example, the loss of an investor's job. The investor's investment capability may be cut short due to unfortunate events such as losing his job. This might force the investor to sell its long-term investments. If the investor sells its investment when the market is down, he may lose money. 9. Reinvestment Risk Reinvestment risk is a risk of loss from reinvesting principal or income at a lower interest rate. Suppose a person buys a bond paying 6%. Reinvestment risk will affect the investor if the interest rate has reduced, and the fund is reinvested at a regular interest rate of 5%. Reinvestment risk will also apply if the bond matures, and the investor reinvests the principal at a reduced interest rate of less than 6%. Reinvestment risk will not apply if the investor intends to spend the regular interest payments or the principal at maturity. 10. Longevity risk Longevity is a risk of outliving one's savings. Longevity risk refers to the chance that life expectancies and actual survival rates exceed expectations or pricing assumptions, resulting in greater than anticipated cash flow needs on the part of insurance companies or pension funds. This risk is particularly relevant for people who are retired or are nearing retirement. Longevity risks arise due to the increasing life expectancy trends among policyholders and pensioners and the growing numbers of people reaching retirement age. The trends can result in higher payout levels than what a company or fund had initially accounted for. The types of plans exposed to the highest levels of longevity risk are defined benefit pension plans and annuities, which sometimes guarantee lifetime benefits for policyholders. 11. Foreign investment risk. Foreign investment risk is a risk of loss associated with investing in foreign countries. When a person buys foreign investments, for example, the shares of companies in emerging markets, it faces risks that do not exist in its home country, such as the risk of nationalization. Components of risk analysis. The three main components, referred to as the three M's of risk analysis, are modeling, measuring, and managing risks. 1. Modeling risk, this includes identifying economically dangerous uncertainties and the risk factors associated with them. Modeling risk also includes the method of observing data and estimating probabilities to quantify and control the risk. 2. Measuring risk, this relates to a quantitative assessment of the amount of risk caused by the methodology used to measure risk. 3. Managing risk consists of all actions needed to mitigate the risk and alleviate the consequences of unwanted events. It involves selecting appropriate risk management techniques, making optimal decisions, and implementing and reviewing the risk management process. Investment Risk Measurement Tools and Techniques Risk management is essential in many sectors, especially in banking, insurance, and finance. Risk management is an integral part of corporate management. Risk is the uncertainty of financial loss. Quantifiable risk can be described based on profit and loss distributions arising from risk factors based on a firm's actions. Risk measures think like volatility or value at risk, VAR, highlighting such distributions properties, favorable or unfavorable. The actions taken should be at minimal costs. Modern portfolio theory is a standard financial and academic methodology for assessing a stock or a stock fund's performance compared to its benchmark index. Risk measures are statistical measures that are historical predictors of investment risk, and volatility is an important component in modern portfolio theory. Risk measures can be used individually or to get her to perform a risk assessment. When comparing two potential investments, it is wise to compare the investments to determine which investments consist of higher risks.
There are several tools and techniques for measuring investment risk. There are seven standard measures of measuring investment risks, and each measure provides a unique way to assess the risk associated with investment opportunities. The seven measures include alpha, beta, R squared, standard deviation, sharp ratio, value at risk and conditional value at risk. Let us describe these investment risk measurement tools and techniques. 1. Alpha. Alpha measures risk relative to the market or a selected benchmark index. For example, if the $50 has been deemed the benchmark for a particular fund, the fund's activity would be compared to that experienced by the selected index. If the fund outperforms the benchmark, it is said to have a positive alpha. If the fund falls below the benchmark's performance, it is considered to have a negative alpha. 2. Beta. A beta is a standard tool for measuring risk. Beta measures a fund's volatility or systemic risk to the whole market or the selected benchmark index. The market is a beta of 1, and it can be used to gauge security risk. A beta of 1 indicates that the fund is expected to move in conjunction with the benchmark. Betas below 1 are considered less volatile than the benchmark, while those over 1 are considered more volatile. If a securities beta equals 1, the securities price moves in time with the market. A security with a beta greater than 1 indicates that it is more volatile than the market. On the other hand, if a securities beta is less than 1, the security is less volatile than the market. For example, suppose a securities beta is 1.5. In theory, security is 50% more volatile than the market. 3. R squared. R squared is a statistical measure that represents the percentage of a fund portfolio or a securities movements that movements in a benchmark index can explain. Hence, R squared measures the percentage of an investment's movement attributable to movements in its benchmark index. An R squared value represents the correlation between the examined investment and its associated benchmark. For example, an R squared value of 95 would be considered a high correlation while an R-squared value of 50 may be considered low. In the United States of America, the U.S. Treasury bill functions as a benchmark for fixed income securities, while the S&P 500 index functions as a benchmark for equities. For fixed income securities and bond funds, the benchmark is the U.S. Treasury bill. The S&P 500 index is the benchmark for equities and equity funds. Mutual fund investors should avoid actively managed funds with high R-squared ratios, which analysts generally criticize as closet index funds. R-squared values range from 0 to 100. A mutual fund with an R-squared value between 85 and 100 has a performance record that is closely correlated to the index. A fund rated 70 or less typically does not perform like the index. In such cases, it makes little sense to pay higher fees for professional management when it is possible to get the same or better results from an index fund. 4. Standard Deviation Standard deviation measures the dispersion of data from its expected value. The standard deviation is used in making an investment decision to measure the amount of historical volatility associated with an investment relative to its annual rate of return. It indicates how much the current return is deviating from its expected historical average returns. For example, a stock with a high standard deviation experiences higher volatility, and therefore, a higher level of risk is associated with the stock. The investment industry's primary measure of risk is the standard deviation. Standard deviation indicates how much an investment will fluctuate from the average return. For example, if an investment fund has a standard road deviation of 3.0, the monthly return will be 3% lower than the average monthly return and 3% higher than the monthly return. If the average monthly return is 2%, then the range at a 3.0% deviation is minus 1% to 5%. Statistically, this happens with a 68% likelihood. 5. Sharp Ratio the Sharp Ratio measures performance as adjusted by the associated risks. This is done by removing the rate of return on a risk-free investment, such as a government treasury bond, from the experienced rate of return. 
This is then divided by the associated investments standard deviation and indicates whether an investment's return is due to wise investing or due to the assumption of excess risk. A variation of the sharp ratio is the Sortino ratio, which removes the effects of upward price movements on standard deviation to focus on the distribution of returns that are below the target or required return. The Sortino ratio also replaces the risk-free rate with the required return in the numerator of the formula, making the formula the return of the portfolio less the required return, divided by the distribution of returns below the target or required return. Another variation of the Sharp ratio is the trainer ratio that uses a portfolio's beta or correlation the portfolio has with the rest of the market. Beta is a measure of an investment's volatility and risk as compared to the overall market. The goal of the trainer ratio is to determine whether an investor is being compensated for taking additional risk above the inherent risk of the market. The trainer ratio formula is the return of the portfolio less the risk-free rate, divided by the portfolio's beta. 6. Value at risk. Value at risk, VAR is a statistical measure used to assess the level of risk associated with a portfolio or company. Value at risk measures the maximum potential loss with a degree of confidence for a specified period. For example, suppose a portfolio of investments has a one-year 10% VAR of N10 million. The portfolio, therefore, has a 10% chance of losing more than N10 million over one year. 7. Conditional value at risk. Conditional value at risk, PVA, is another risk measure used to assess the tail risk of an investment. Conditional value at risk, PVA, is used as an extension to the value at risk, PVA. PVA assesses the likelihood, with a certain degree of confidence, that there will be a break in the value at risk. It seeks to assess what happens to investment beyond its maximum loss threshold. This measure is more sensitive to events in the tail end of the distribution, the tail risk. For example, suppose a risk manager believes the average loss on an investment is N5 million for the worst 1% of possible outcomes for a portfolio. The conditional value at risk or expected shortfall will be N5 million for the 1% tail. Investment Risk Management the effectiveness of an investment risk management framework depends on the investment objectives and associated risks, quantification of those risks, the process for managing those risks and monitoring of the entire process. Mathematical distributions can precisely define not all risks, and some risks might be difficult to measure. While managing investment portfolios, managers should consider the intended risks and other risks that can impact the returns. The implication is that investment risk management is the foundation of a well-run investment process. During the investment strategy formulation, a greater focus on expected returns and a lesser focus on risk may mismatch between the investment objective and risk appetite. Investment managers should assure clients that their assets are managed based on the formulated investment strategy. A firm's risk management culture, size, location, and scope impact the organization's practices and investment control measures. Due to the increased level of regulators scrutinizing controls on risk management practices, investors and investment managers are expected to comply with minimum levels of best practice in risk management to ensure a sound investment management framework. Principles of an Effective Investment Risk Management the global financial crisis brought risk management to the forefront and highlighted how the absence of an all-encompassing risk framework might prove disastrous for asset managers. During the crisis, the market's behavior showed that existing risk management practices failed when they were most needed, significantly as the risk extended to previously uncorrelated asset classes. Although such black swan events may be impossible to predict ex ante, implementing a comprehensive investment risk framework helps asset managers manage risk for standard times and be mindful of and prepare for such extreme events. So, what does sound risk management mean for asset managers? The principles of a practical investment risk management framework are based on the investment objectives and expectations around risk quantifying those risks, managing those risks, and overseeing the entire process. 1. 
link between investment objectives and risk management. While all market participants may be exposed to some common risk factors, the way these participants generally think about risk varies. Asset managers who invest their clients' money based on a specific investment object and guidelines, for instance, will think differently about risk than proprietary traders who invest their capital. Although risks are viewed differently, investment risk management generally begins with defining the return objective and investment strategy. All portfolios should have a clearly defined and documented mandate that stipulates the investment objective and indicates how key risks in the deployment of assets will be managed. 2. Quantification of risks. Quantitative measures to gauge investment risks help asset managers understand and manage risks in their portfolios. Portfolio exposures, sources of return and risk should be review frequent to ensure consistency with the mandate and provide feedback on the strategy. The impact of these exposures on performance and the expected risk should be quantified and validated against expectations and investment convictions. 3. Systematic and impartial process. The size and complexity of organizations warrant embedding the risk management processes into the organization's infrastructure. Integration of the risk processes eliminates the dependency on individuals and supports senior management's claim of appropriately discharging their fiduciary oversight duty. In addition, an independent team should administer and generate analytics and reporting to ensure that all portfolios are subject to the same level of rigor in terms of investment risk management. Exceptions in the process should be escalated to and reviewed by management for oversight and accountability. A good risk management process can be characterized as providing a clear line of sight of risks undertaken. The management is aware and can demonstrate active monitoring and management of these risks. A periodic review process should be undertaken to ensure objective and unbiased discussions on investment risk exposures. An independent investment risk team can administer these reviews, provide impartial oversight and support, and document actions to ensure that the process is taking place. Investment Risk Management Framework Risk management is a mechanism for measuring, monitoring, and preventing loss, but it serves a broader and more practical purpose in investment risk management. Investment management risks can be categorized into two broad categories, 1, investment risks associate with an alpha, and, 2, investment risks are strictly characterized by loss. Market risk provides opportunities for upside and downside, that is, favorable, and unfavorable, market risks. In contrast, counterparty and operational risks have no alpha associated with them, and they should be minimized in a cost-effective manner. Regardless of the risk involved, a practical risk management framework should be aligned with the investment strategy. The risk management process should also be effectively defined, controlled, and monitored. Monitoring is a significant step within an investment risk management framework. Although the terminology may differ, a robust investment risk management framework consists of four steps, defining, controlling, monitoring, and assuring. Let us discuss these steps in detail. Step 1, define critical risk exposures of the organization. The first step of an investment risk management framework is to define the key risks that the firms are exposed to at different levels in the investment structure. Depending on the investments and regulatory environment, the firm might be exposed to various risks. Portfolio exposures, sources of return and risk, and the client objectives and constraints should be considered when defining the risks. This is necessary to ensure consistent monitoring and appraisal at different levels, thereby translating the investment objectives into strategies and actual investments. Step 2. Control risks through budgets parameters, and defined tolerance levels. The firm's risk should be control risks by assigning budgets and setting parameters and tolerances for the defined risks. A proactive approach to risk management involves allocating risk budgets and setting risk tolerances. Portfolio managers should exercise discretion within clearly defined parameters based on the formulated investment strategy. 
These parameters should not limit the portfolio manager's discretion, but they should help the manager adopt the practical approach in the context of the investment objective and strategy. These parameters should be guidelines rather than hard limits unless the client or the regulatory body explicitly stated them. Step 3. Monitor risk. Monitoring of risks should be effectively undertaken within the context of the investment risks management objectives. This should be done by escalating exceptions and systematically and objectively generating reports by an independent risk team. Once the risks have been defined and controls have been established, a systematic process of regular monitoring and reporting of these risks by an independent team will ensure validation and consistency of the approach. The independent team should generate analytics and reporting to ensure that all portfolios are subject to the same level of rigor to ensure sound investment risk management. The objective should focus mainly on achieving exception reporting, highlighting the most significant exposures, contributors to risk, and risk factors based on the established parameters and controls. Step 4. Ensure consistency and comprehensiveness in the process. Consistency and comprehensiveness can be ensured by establishing a good oversight of the entire process, segregation of roles and responsibilities, and regular review and feedback. Clear demonstration, review and feedback in the risk management process will help to assure clients and investors that there is a robust investment risk management process in place. Deviations from the expected targets, ranges, and strategy, if any, should be adequately justified. If there is a deviation, the deviation should be within the proper monitoring, escalating, challenging and management framework. Investment Portfolio Risk Control Any investor would agree that ignorance and lack of awareness in the investment field can be expensive. In finance and investment, risk management is very closely related, somewhat necessary for measuring performance. Understanding risks are, therefore, a crucial part of building financial and investment knowledge. Before making any investment, it is common for us to explore the benefits it offers. It is, however, more important to be aware of the risks involved in an investment. Knowledge of the potential risks will help us manage and control the hidden losses that it can cause. Good advice here is a detailed investigation of the investment before the actual investment of funds. Sometimes, this may involve much hard work, but down the line, it will surely save the investor from severe losses. Here are three steps to control risk in an investment portfolio. Step 1. Understand Risk Management Managing risks is an essential factor for an investor to enhance its profitability and maximize investment returns. We usually tend to consider risk as something negative. Here, we are likely to forget the notable paradox, which suggests that we do not fully understand any investment until we know all its related means of losing money. In other words, we should identify all significant risks that could lead to probable losses well in advance. After that, we need to manage all the possible risks proactively. Let us now have a detailed understanding of the risk management process. Step 2. Establish Risk Profile The primary step would involve the identification and grouping of the risks associated with an investment. A well-designed investment portfolio and strategy make managing every critical risk possible, except for certain uncontrollable risks. Business inherent risks can be classified into four categories, company-specific, industry-specific, investment style, and market risks. Let us now explain the four categories of inherent risks. 1. Company-specific, these include anything peculiar to the company and that is not a part of the industry. Examples of such risks are lawsuits and mismanagement. Company-specific risks can be managed through diversification. 2. Industry-specific, these comprise alterations in consumer preferences, technologies, and industry laws. These can be controlled by not restricting the industry portfolio to a single domain or industry. 3. Investment style. This risk is associated with investment value, growth or large cap, and micro cap investments. The market varies with how an investor manages different investment styles over time. 
These risks can be managed by not concentrating on a particular investment style. 4. Market risks. These risks are manageable through self-discipline and diversification by diversifying into non-correlated markets such as cash and commodities, real estate, and international equities. Step 3. Creating a controlled risk profile. Post understanding the risk profile, the investor must devise ways of controlling possible investment risks. The investor must accept the investment risks of the unmanaged profile. This will result in minimizing the overall risks. Each investment has its exclusive risk management tools due to its unique investment features and trading markets. Every market, having its unique characteristics, can be utilized for effective risk management. Because what works for one market may not work for the other. The symbol of a good investment is achieving substantial positive profits and consistent and risk-free returns in all market scenarios. How to manage investment portfolio risk. Here are five ways to manage investment portfolio risk. 1. Follow the trend. The trend is an investor's friend until it ends. One way to manage investment risk is to commit to only buying stocks or exchange-traded funds, ETFs, that are in an uptrend and to sell them once they violate their trend line support. An investor can draw its trend lines by connecting a series of higher lows on a chart, or he can use a moving average like the 50-day or 200-day to act as support. The investor will sell if the price breaks that support level by a predetermined amount. 2. Rebalancing Longer-term investors may try to manage risk by periodically selling stock investments or asset classes that have come to take up too much of their portfolios. They will sell off those assets and buy more stocks or ETFs that have underperformed. This can be a forced means of buying low and selling high. 3. Position Sizing Another way to play defense is to limit investment exposure. If a given investment is riskier than others, the investor can decide not to invest in it or only a small fund or capital. Many investors use this type of approach to gain exposure to riskier sectors like biotechnology or small cap stocks. A 50% loss on a $2,000 investment hurts a lot less than it would on a $20,000 investment. The easiest way to lower a stock market risk is to shift some investment capital to cash for stop loss orders. The investor can place a stop loss order with its brokers who is authorized to automatically sell out all or part of the position in each stock or ETF if it falls below a preset price point. Of course, the trick is to set the price low enough that the investor will not get stopped out on a routine pullback but high enough that the investor can limit its capital loss. Placing a stop loss order is one way to limit the investment portfolio's possible loss and enforce a strict defensive discipline. Moving or ignoring stop loss levels may eventually result in more significant losses. Hence, the first exit is the best. 5. Diversification. The idea behind investment diversification is to buy asset classes or sectors that are not correlated. That means that if one goes up, the other is probably going down. Diversification has been more challenging to achieve over the past few years as many asset classes have become highly correlated. Even stocks and bonds have been moving in the same direction much more often than in the past. Diversification is an excellent strategy to limit investment risk, but it only works if the assets bought are uncorrelated. An investor should analyze relatively recent performance rather than relying on historical relationships that may no longer be working. Conclusion. Investment risk and the management of investment risks have been discussed in this video. Risk is integral to return. Investment risk is the probability or likelihood of losses relative to the expected return on any particular investment. Every investment comes with some degree of risk. Hence, a good understanding of risk and investment portfolio management will assist investors in making better decision making. This will also help them better comprehend the opportunities, settlements and costs involved in different investment approaches. I hope the video is educative and beneficial to you. Which aspect of investment risk and investment risk management discussed do you consider to be most important? Please post your response below in the comments section.
If this video has been educative and beneficial to you, then, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thank you for seeing the risk management of everything videos. We love to hear from you. Please post your comments and questions in the comment section below. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe to our channel, Risk Management of Everything channel, and press the notification button so you can be notified when we upload new videos. Thank you.